Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. Welcome to part two of Steam Deck Month. This is Team Retro's Ode to the Steam Deck, which is now about a year old. And this video is part two of a four part series about what makes the Steam Deck so great. And in this video, we're going to focus on emulation, specifically EmuDeck. Now, I did a tutorial video on how to set up EmuDeck last summer, but a lot has changed since then, so I figure now is the best time for a refresh. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. I actually reformatted my Steam Deck, so we're going to go through the updated MU Deck process and we're going to get you from zero to hero. That way, if you did get a new Steam Deck or you haven't updated MU Deck in a while, you'll get to see what's new and what they've done. And I'm also going to showcase a couple of games that I highly recommend that you try once you have MU Deck up and running. This is all very exciting stuff and it is surprisingly easy to do. So let's dive in and let's get to work. Alright, let's start on the Steam Deck in desktop mode, and as you can see, this is a very bare bones new installation of SteamOS. And we're going to start just by navigating to the MU Deck website, and there's a ton of information right on the front page on the various features of MU Deck, like screen ratio and emulation station desktop edition so we're going to just go ahead and go to download and then we're going to download the installer it's a very short install and then we can copy it over to our desktop and just let it run and it's a much more streamlined install from the way it was in the past it will actually take you to a welcome to emudex setup page and we can do either an easy setup or we can actually go through a custom mode. I'm going to go through the custom mode here because I want to pick as many options as I can. And everything is straightforward. Just go through the prompts. Here you can click all of the emulators that you don't want. And if they're grayed out, that means that the EmuDeck install will not put them on your Steam Deck. And there's a couple of new emulators here, such as Vita 3K, and it says there's a Melon DS standalone, but that's actually part of RetroArch, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to just go ahead and click off some of the emulators that I know I'm not going to use, such as Vita 3K, ScumVM, and MAME standalone, and we're just going to go ahead and click continue. And then in this page, you'll get a similar looking screen, but this one is to update your emulator's configuration. We're just going to leave all of them on. And then it's just as simple as clicking through the prompts and turning off and on what specifically you want to have in your configuration. You can set up retro achievements, you can set up autosave for when you open and close games, you can configure game bezels for certain systems, and there's just a whole host of options here. And I just encourage you to go through them all and set up your configuration how you would like. Some of these systems will have custom aspect ratios or widescreen hacks. And depending on what your gameplay experience is or what your preferences are, you may want to set these to different 
options and you can always rerun this setup wizard again just by double clicking MU deck from your desktop. So don't feel like you have to be stuck with these settings if you don't like them. You can always go back in and readjust them again. And I'm not going to tell you which options to pick. This is all going to be your personal preference and how you like to play your games or how you like your front end to look. But when you're done picking your options, then MU Deck is going to automatically configure itself and you're going to be installed and good to go. So now you're going to have an emulation folder with a slot for BIOS files, a folder for ROMs, and now's the time for us to start moving our BIOS and our ROM files over and what I'm doing here is I'm just using an external hard drive with all of those files on them which is directly connected to the Steam Deck, but there are several ways in which you can get these BIOS and ROM files. You could download them directly to the Steam Deck using a browser, or if you have a network drive, or you have a Google Drive, or you have these stored in some kind of cloud storage, you could download them too. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get BIOS files and ROM files, the only thing I can tell you is that once you do have them, it is just a simple matter of dragging and dropping. So here I have all my BIOS files ready to go. Now if you are looking to emulate Nintendo Switch games, you're going to need a firmware file and you're also going to need the title keys. I can't tell you where to get them but I can tell you where to put them and it's also going to be under the BIOS file in the Yuzu folder. If it asks you to overwrite anything just go ahead and skip it and then you're going to put your title keys and your product keys right in the BIOS, Yuzu and keys folder. And then putting your ROM files is just a simple drag and drop. You just want to make sure that you go into the ROMs directory and then you go into the subfolder for the system that you want. And this could take a few minutes, especially with some of the bigger files. So while this is transferring, go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee, use the bathroom, grab your beverage of choice, and then come on back when everything's copied over and then we will start to go in and configure some of these ROMs onto the home screen of SteamOS. And we're going to do that by rerunning EmuDeck and going under Tools and Stuff and we're going to go to the Steam ROM Manager. Now I also want to point out there are a ton of other nice settings in here including adding power tools or decky controls. I'm going to get into a couple of these in another video. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and launch Steam ROM Manager. Now, in my specific use case, I have a very small and curated ROM library, and I want to put them all on the home screen of SteamOS. And I'm going to do that by activating these parsers on the left side. So what I like to do is turn all of them off by just clicking the on and off switch by parsers and then I like to scroll down and just pick the systems I'm only interested in generating an app list for and then I'll go up to preview and generate app list and it's going to pull artwork and everything you pretty much need and you can go through and you can pick your different pieces of artwork if you want you can go through the different posters, heroes, and icons, and you can customize this experience however you choose. And then when you're done, go ahead and click Save App List, and then go into the Event Log, and just make sure it says Done Adding Removing Entries. And then we can go into our Steam Library, and you might want to remove some things that were added. Like for example, there are some emulators here that I don't need, but I also want to get rid of some of the extra text in the shortcuts. So I'll right click, I'll go into properties, 
and then I'll just go ahead and rename them. And you'll notice there's very little grunt work you'll have to do here. Everything is categorized by system. There just might be a file name or two that didn't make the cut or got lost in the sauce. Another thing to keep in mind is some of these standalone emulators may need a little bit of extra configuration. For example, for Wii U with CMU here, you may want to add DLC to some of your ROM titles, in which case you'll have to do that manually by navigating to the folder that houses your update files and installing them manually. And those might be different depending on how you have them stored. But here I have unpacked data in a file folder. All I have to do is go ahead and pick the folder and I can install all my updates or DLC that way. Just keep in mind that CMU is a little buggy, so sometimes the keyboard may pop up randomly. You also want to look at your PlayStation standalone emulator, specifically DuckStation and RPCS3 for PlayStation 3, because there may be a situation where you're going to have to manually navigate to a BIOS, and in the case of PS3, you also have to install the PlayStation 3 system software, which you can get that directly from Sony's website, and all you have to do is right-click and save link as and you'll go ahead and you'll get that firmware file and it will install right away once you navigate to it in the emulator now if you have a bigger library and you don't want all of the games on your steam os front end EmuDeck also comes with this built-in front end called emulation station desktop edition and all of your ROMs are automatically curated into this program and are available as a list and you can scrape box art and if you have a longer library this may be something that you're more interested in you may want to keep a couple of games readily accessible on the SteamOS homepage but then you may decide that you want to keep the majority of your library here in Emulation Station and that option is definitely available to you and it's already programmed from the start. Alright, now that we have EmuDeck up and running and we are ready to start playing some games, I'm going to cap off this video just by showing you a couple of games that I think might be worth your time on the Steam Deck. And the first one here would be Kirby's Return to Dreamland for the Game Boy Advance. This is one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games and definitely worth your time. Now this is a remake of the NES game Kirby's Adventure. But if you ask me, this is the better, more definitive version. I could be looking at this game with nostalgia goggles just because I played it a lot in college, but I highly recommend you give it a shot. The next game on the list would be The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Now up until recently this game was only available on the Game Boy Advance, but you can now access it through Nintendo Switch Online if you have the expansion pass. But you can also play it here on the Steam Deck and it is one of the best top-down Zeldas in my opinion and it might be one that was overlooked because it hasn't been readily available up until now. But I highly recommend you give this unique take on the Zelda franchise a shot.
the Patapon series is unique to the PlayStation Portable with three games coming out only for that handheld. As of right now, PSP is the only way to play the Patapon games, and I highly recommend that you start with Patapon 2 because this game just has a lot of charm to it. You're basically leading an army of little eyeball figures to their promised land and you're doing it by banging on a drum and depending on what you bang or what buttons you push will determine what the Patapon do, whether they attack, retreat, or move forward. And it's actually a surprisingly fun rhythm game. My final recommendation for this video will be from the DS era because I wanted to show how Melon DS works as a retro art core. So here is New Super Mario Brothers, and we are running this at a 5x resolution, which is essentially as close to 1080p as we can get on the Steam Deck. Looks beautiful and if you're going to look into the origins of the new Super Mario Bros. series, look no further than this game because this game is the first reboot of the Mario series and it turned out to be a lot of fun. This Mario game added a new soundtrack as well as new power-ups like the Mega Mushroom. And so thanks to the simple magic of Emudeck on the Steam Deck, these are just a few of the many games that you can thoroughly enjoy on this system, and there are many different ways in which you can customize that experience. And so this program has come a long way since it originally started, and it really is a must-have for most Steam Deck owners who are interested in retro gaming. And it adds a lot of versatility to this device, and it is accessible for pretty much any Steam Deck user. And so if you're new to MU Deck, or you haven't used it in a long time since you got your Steam Deck, hopefully this tutorial refresher will get you up and running, or will get you nice and updated. But that'll do it for this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, and please feel free to continue the conversation on the Steam Machine Discord, link will be in the video description. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.